Welcome, 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 welcome to the Boxing Bookie. We are back. We are back. It is good to be back. We are back. Uh, we got a good one. We'll get into the Catterall versus Josh Taylor fight. Uh, this is going to be a good fight, I suppose. A lot of people are interested, and in I've been getting asked a lot for this. And and, and at first, I, uh, <clears throat> off the top of my head, I was really confused on who I was going to pick. I, I went and I studied a lot of tape. I, I watched the first fight. I'm not confused at all anymore. I think it's pretty clear, and I, I think this is a good fight to make money on. Right, let me know what you guys think. Uh, let's get – before we get into that, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, all forms of social media. The Boxing Bookie uh, comes at you for every single major fight, showing you how to consistently make money betting on the sport of boxing. Um, the odds makers, the bookies, they don't know what they're doing. I do. Uh, join the Patreon. Link is in the description. Or it's in the banner below. It's in the little ticker below. It's five dollars a month. Gets you lock of the week. Gets you all the great perks. Gets you the free T-shirt. Ask the book anything. Ask me to handicap a fight. I will show you how to make money on that fight. Again, we make money every single week. The odds makers, the bookies, they don't know what they're doing. I'm gonna show you how to consistently make money. Also, join uh, subscribe to the channel Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All proceeds go to autism research and recovery. Sorry about that. Texas boxing scene on YouTube. All right. All right. Let's get into this fight. Catterall, Josh Taylor. The first fight, I, I thought Catterall eked it out. I wasn't in the travesty camp, although I did think Catterall won the fight. Um, he got the knockdown. They both had a point deduction. I, I had him winning by a single point. I wasn't. And it was a robbery, although I did think Catterall won. I thought Josh Taylor could have done better, which is why I was kind of torn for the second fight. I'm not. You know, Catterall is good mobility. He moves well. He, he moves really well. He's a high IQ fighter. He's got a nice jab. It's an educated jab, and he uses it to get his way in. Good head movement, good lateral movement. He doesn't sit still a lot. He's not an easy target to hit. He changes levels offensively really well. He's just a really good fighter. He's a very, very good fighter. Like, whoever taught him how to box taught him really well. He checks so many boxes. He's sharp and accurate from the outside. Like he said, the jab is really sharp. He uses the ring well. He'll use every square inch of the jab, even though he's not lightning fast. right? He's not Shakur Stevenson, but he knows how to use the ring. Really nice counter shots. Really, really good counter puncher. The straight left. He counters with, with the straight left really well. Circles, uses the ring. He's a high IQ. He knows how to win rounds. And he can just start putting rounds in the bank just like with his brain, with his know-how, with his jab. He knows how to score. He knows how to avoid getting hit. He's just a guy that's difficult. Now, he's not the biggest puncher in the world. He's probably not going to score a knockout against Josh Taylor. I, I like this fight to go the distance. I like it a lot. But you have a guy that knows how to use his jab. He knows how to counter. He, he knows how to put his punches together. Sharp, sharp, crisp one-twos from the outside. He can get on the inside. can work. can get out. can make you miss without running, without holding. He's a good defensive fighter for not being a super athlete. I'm not saying he's a poor athlete, but I'm saying he's not a super next-level athlete right that's not what he is jack catterall is a very good fighter he's a very good fighter and unless you have something truly special you know incredible speed incredible power like frank davis it, this is going to be a tough guy to deal with his only loss is to josh taylor back uh it's already over two years ago in in, in late 2022 uh, he's won a couple of fights since then. He, he beat uh, Dara Foley convincingly, and then he beat Jorge Linares, and, and I was I thought was a great fight for Linares. He was competitive in the fight, but you know he ultimately came up all short. I was not high on it. I thought the fight with with Tyrone McKenna was much too close. I thought the fight with O'Hara Davis, but you know we go back. That's five, six years ago already. He's a much better fighter. He's an experienced fighter. He's 30 now. I, I think he's at his absolute prime. I think we're going to see the best version of Jack Catterall. I think he's going to be better 
than he was in the first fight. Josh Taylor, I think, is going to be worse than he was in the first fight. And I didn't think he won the first fight. It's will be out of the ring almost a year since the TFP Lopez fight in which he did not look good in, although he still was able to keep it competitive on the scorecards. I had it the same as two of the justices, 115, 113. Everyone was writing him up, and, and I said up until the end, that Catterall's in this fight, although I don't think he's winning. Uh, that was for the last of his belts. He, he's Obviously, he has no belts left. He lost TFP, but he was down to one. He's given up the rest of the four belts that he had. In the last three years, he's fought just twice. And he hasn't looked good in either one of them. The win over Catterall, in which I think he lost, and the loss to TV Lopez. The last time he looked good in a fight was May 2022 against Ramirez. And you go back and you look at the Josh Taylor that Beat Ramirez. Dropped him twice. The one that destroyed Kong Song. That beat Regis Progripe. That beat Brancheck. That beat Ryan Martin. That beat that dominated Victor Postal. That guy is gone. That was a long time ago. That was 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. We're three years removed from that. This is not the same fighter. You go back and you watch the Catterall fight, and I think he stayed at 140 too long. I think he was way too big for the weight class. I think, honestly, he should have left the weight class after the pro grade fight. He was massive then. He looked 10 pounds bigger, at least in the ring, than pro grade did that night. And pro grade's a lifelong 140. He, um. Had three quarters of the belt, I think, at that point, right? And then he had to go on, I think, or, or he had either two or three belts. I'm not exactly sure, but he, he had gotten to undisputed. He went on. He he beat Kong Song, and then he beat Ramirez to get all the belts. And at that point, he really should have left. Um, really, really should have been gone out of the division. But he hung around some more. And he hung around too long. And I think he's just drained himself. I think he's lessened himself. I think he's weakened himself. He's still tall, long, and rangy. He still has good power. He comes forward. He seems to... What? Throw two targets instead of through targets. Now, it's just he's, you can see he's a fighter in decline. He's not a huge volume guy. Never was. And now he seems to get gun shy. Like he's unwilling like he's lost the step in his speed from draining himself and he's afraid to really let his hands go like he did in the pro grade fight and the Ramirez fight and Victor Postal and, and and things like that he's not really accurate he was never really a great outside fighter he could just he knew how to use his reach and his jab to a degree but he even in those fights he did a lot of his work despite being told long he did it on the inside where he's heavy-handed he still has the jab and he still has the range He's still a good fighter, right? I'm not saying he's not. He's still a good fighter. I just don't think he's as good as he was the first. You know, he's not as good as he was against Ramirez, which was three years ago. He was 30 then. He's 33 now. I think he's just fought in that division too long. He's weight training. He, he just he shows his shots. He telegraphs his punches. He's a little bit slower. He's not as accurate. He's easier to hit. He just looks a really good fighter. I thought in 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, he was a great fighter, a pound-for-pound pound fighter on a Hall of Fame trajectory. I said he was at, when he beat uh, Regis. He's the best Scottish fighter of all time. I, this is not me dumping on Josh Taylor. I'm just saying I think he did not do his career any justice staying at the weight class beyond 2019, especially beyond 2021. The Ramirez fight, he was in the pound-for-pound pound discussion. He's probably in your pound-for-pound pound top five, and he deserved it. He should have left and gone to 47. I, I don't understand what he thought Jack Catterall was going to do for his legacy. He should have just gone, up and he should be at 147 now. And he's going to kill himself to make the weight again. I just think it's going to get worse and worse and worse. 
And it's a shame, too, because I, he was such an excellent fighter. And I, I think this weight cut, just like it did to Errol Spence at 47, lessened him. You know, like, just... He could have carried his power and skills from 40 to 47. I'm not saying... I think Jack Carroll's going to win this fight. Obviously, I think Jack Carroll's going to win this fight. So let's get into the odds. Again, I still think Josh Taylor's good. He's still good. He's still a smart, savvy fighter with range, with a jab, with some power. He's still a good fighter. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to take Jack Catterall on a money line. It's minus 150, so we're going to make 67 bucks on that. And we're going to take the over. I don't think Catterall stops him. It's not the kind of fight it is. And I, again, I'm making this sound like Catterall's going to wash him. Catterall's going to win the fight. And I think he's going to win it clearly this time. So they can't take it from him. And I, I'm not one that thought it was a travesty in the first fight, but I think he's going to win the fight. He's going to win it convincingly. He's going to win it on points. So we're taking over 10 and a half, which is going to make us $34 on a $100 bet. And we're going to uh, put the money on the money line on Caterall, who's minus 150. That's going to make us $67. So we're going to make about $102 on a $200 bet. It's pretty good odds. Um, again, if... I'm wrong. I think Josh Taylor wins on points, but I think this fight's definitely going the distance. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. We've got a little hedge here. We got a good bet on Catter on the money line that I like a lot. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Block on all forms of social media. It is May 23rd, uh, 2024 from Texas to the world. Thank you. And God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.